Hi, Fab Foodies. Welcome to the kitchen. Uh, today, we're gonna do a really quick how-to demo just because I'm already making this banana bread. Um, so as my title suggests, you may be one of the hundreds, maybe thousands of people who are struggling to find flour and other baking ingredients in the store right now because everybody's home, everybody wants to be baking, um, and everybody's, I don't know, doomsday prepping and so they have 80 kilograms of flour in their basement. I don't know. Um, but uh, from what I gather, finding flour and yeast uh, around town are some difficult tasks these days. So never fear. I have you covered if you want to be baking at home and you can't find flour anywhere. Um, today I'm making our sweet banana bread loaf, but um, we I also got you covered. I've got brownie mix, I've got pancake, waffle and muffin batter, uh, pizza crust as well. No bag of flour required, no yeast required either. So what we're gonna do for the banana muffins and banana bread today is really, really easy. It requires a third of a cup of oil. I have used, I'm using melted coconut oil. I'm actually gonna really quickly oil my pan here. Um, it's not 100% necessary that you oil the pan, but it helps just so that it doesn't stick. Um, I like using coconut oil in the actual loaf because it does make it so moist and very uh, likely that you don't even need to oil the pan, but whatever. So a third of a cup of melted coconut oil. You could probably use avocado oil in there as well. I don't recommend um, olive oil. It probably won't taste very good. And I 100% do not recommend vegetable oil because vegetables don't have oil. It's not really food. Um, but coconut oil is great for baking. You could also use melted butter. Um, or ghee. I would I would recommend those before I would recommend vegetable oil. Um, two bananas, and if you're like us, they get sad pretty fast sometimes. Other times, I can't keep bananas in the house. The girls will eat them all. Uh, right now, they're not on a banana kick, I guess, so we've got some sad bananas here. So we're gonna throw them in with the melted oil. Mash them up. I find a potato masher does a super great job. You just smash them in there with that oil. This, this is a cathartic process. If you're finding yourself going a little stir crazy while at home, you need a stress relief, mash some bananas with a potato masher. <laughs> It makes everything better. So once they look nice and smashed, um, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could blast them in the blender. I know I have done that many a time, but this is quieter, way more cathartic. There's our smashed bananas. Then you want two room temperature eggs. Um, baking with eggs that are room temperature just makes it fluffier. The oven doesn't have to work as hard. Um, a cold egg with the melted coconut oil may also um, cause the coconut oil to solidify again. And then you're gonna get pockets of chunks of oil throughout instead of the nice smooth. I guess that's why some people would use vegetable oil instead because it's liquid all the time because it's hydrogenated, so that's why we don't want to eat that stuff. Um, two eggs, throw them in, stir them around to combine. And then I'm gonna show you my secret ingredient here. It's not so secret, I have shared this secret before. Um, when you're gluten-free baking, you may find that um, it doesn't fluff the same way as you might expect. I mean, using real eggs helps, 
I actually have a really great resource that I shared with my best friend this week um, for egg replacers because she made a banana bread last week that did not go as she expected. Um, she used an egg replacement and it took almost twice as long to bake and it was still almost raw in the center. So I have a really great resource if you're looking for ways to um, not use eggs in your baking either. Uh, turns out using carbonated water is like the thing. Um, but my secret, because this is gluten-free, is apple cider vinegar. So there is baking soda in the sweet banana bread mix. And if you take a look at the ingredients, there's next to nothing in there. Um, rice flour, organic cane sugar, cornstarch, tapioca starch, baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon, and sea salt. And that's it. That's all that's in there. Um, because we are sugar conscious, the organic cane sugar, there is less. Um, for the prepared loaf, uh, what do we got here? Sugar. Six grams of sugar. And that includes, um, I guess, the banana. Because, again, sad bananas are sweeter. They do have more sugar. As bananas ripen, their... Um, the starches in them break down into their simple sugars. So that's why a lot of recipes, um, you'll, you, you don't want to use too much banana if you're trying to avoid adding too much sugar. So my secret for fluffing gluten-free baking is add a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar into the batter, right, well, into the egg, oil, and banana right before you stir in the batter mix and the apple cider vinegar will mix with the baking soda that's in here and help it fluff. So then we're gonna dump the mix in, use the whole package. Um, one, you get two packages when you order these. One package makes one standard size loaf or four mini loaves or 12 muffins or I believe 24 of the perfect petites. Um, so plenty out of one bag. I'm going to just stir this around until it's combined. All right. Now I'm also going to add, because realistically when we're making banana bread, it's always better with chocolate. So I'm going to disappear off the screen for a second because I have to grab the chocolate chips. We use dark chocolate ones because I'm a dark chocolate junkie around here. It's better for you anyway. There's less, there's less in it. <laughs> um, I always say when I'm doing my kids in the kitchen classes and we're making stuff like brownies and banana bread, the kids ask, how much chocolate should we add? And I said, I've always said, you measure that with your heart. <laughs> I'll probably add about a cup of chocolate chips to this loaf. Um, you could add more than that if you want. Depends on how chocolatey you want them. So another thing with gluten-free baking is you do want to make sure that you've well combined the, the dry mix, um, just so you don't get dry pockets. It's uh, Gluten-free flour works differently. Rice flour is pretty decent. Um, which is why it's the one that we're using in this mix. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it's not too grainy. Um, it absorbs moisture well and doesn't leave you with that sandy texture that a lot of gluten-free baking is notorious for. So we're going to throw in our chocolate chips. Again, you do you. Use the kind you prefer. If you prefer milk chocolate, go for it. If you want to add two cups, go for it. I'm going to add one today. And then just fold them into the batter. Once they're combined, throw them into your pan. So this is the rectangular steamer. It makes an absolutely perfect loaf pan. Um, because it's the silicone, it's way easier to clean. I only lightly oiled it um, and the loaf will come right out. They can go in the dishwasher. I love our silicone stuff. It's all food grade. It's not made of plastic so they are dishwasher oven and microwave safe. Um, 
you could bake this banana bread in the microwave if you really wanted to um, and it would probably take you about I don't know 10 minutes I find with the gluten-free baking I don't mind taking the extra time to wait for it to bake in the oven um, because the microwave baking definitely changes the gluten-free texture a little bit um, but if you want a banana bread in 10 minutes you could totally throw the steamer in the microwave so again I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bang so that some of the air gets out and it levels it off and then you're gonna throw it into a 350 degree oven oh no Jessica needs to adjust her oven <laughs> Pro tip, <laughs> check inside the oven before you heat it up. You may have moved your rack or something else. So, oven rack moved, throw it in there. And then because it is a full size loaf, you are going to want to, I think it's about 40 minutes. Let's see here, bake in a preheated oven. 45 minutes. Um, and I definitely do find, it, again, it depends on your oven, um, but uh, I find with the gluten-free baking, the top of the time is generally more accurate. Um, if you were doing them in the mini loaf pan, so it splits the batter into four mini loaves, it takes about 30 minutes. The perfect petites takes about 20 minutes because it's 24 to 30 little um, individual bites and the muffin pan I think is 18 to 20 minutes um, depending on how you're baking it. I don't mind doing it as a whole uh, loaf today because then we can slice it up uh, and it's a super easy one to show to demo in a video. So thanks for tuning in. Um, what else am I going to share this week? I don't know it's already Thursday so we'll see what else comes up this week. If you can hear the microwave going, I'm actually cooking macaroni noodles in there right now because we're going to do a baked mac and cheese because the oven is already on to make the banana bread. We're going to do homemade baked mac, mac and cheese. Um, the mac and cheese is actually one of the meal solutions that is currently featured in our stay home collections. Um, so next week I'm going to feature a number of the items in the stay home collections and the idea behind them is that they are curated so that you can have 30, 60 or 90 days worth of meals um, planned out. I have shared uh, the, the meal plan resources and stuff on my web on my my website as well um, so yeah tonight's mac and cheese we did pulled chicken last night the girls love the stroganoff Madeline has asked for donaire so we've got lots of stuff to share in the the next coming week so thanks for tuning in this afternoon guys uh, stay safe I won't say out there because you're in there stay safe in your own homes and uh, keep tuning in keep watching what we're creating because I'm I'm always happy to have you joining so thanks guys See you again soon. Bye.